leave them in order. Um, roll call, please, Carol. Chairman Gerald Gray. Here. Member Rick Carey. Here. Member David Hutchins. Here. Member Penny Kosinski. Here. Chair, Vice Chair Mark Marsh. Here. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Tracy, I was just talking to Brian. Has yeah. this always been up here? No, it was requested at the last meeting by Vice Chair Marsh oh, that okay. it was added. Okay. That way, it w you yeah. could open it up okay. for any comments. Good. So prior let's, to it's on the agenda. Let's do it, uh, Commissioner. Comments. I have one that uh, has to do with the full size drawings. And would it be <laughs> possible for us to switch to smaller scale drawings for our distributions and meetings and have a large scale set available here at the office. Uh, we've done, there's been one or two applicants that have presented them that way and it's, uh, it certainly makes it a lot less cumbersome in the meetings. So are you talking 11 by 17? Yeah. I think that. Okay. <clears throat> I, I've got a question, is that, is this appropriate? Uh, we, we had demolition plans in two of these packages and I don't remember ever seeing those before. Is that, uh, is that what should, are now required or something? Uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, some of the applicants have given us a little bit more information that we actually need for this particular uh, setting, uh, so it's included. So if that's the only reason why it's there. But no, it's a, that's not a requirement. Yeah, I, <clears throat> that was one of my comments is two of those projects or these projects <clears throat> are severely demolished yeah. prior to any formal review or final review. Um, and I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because <clears throat> if an applicant for some reason doesn't get approved, you leave a house that's two thirds removed. And what does that leave the town or the neighborhood? You know, I think it's, it's I was actually shocked to see how much demo had been done. Good point. Well, the one up on Marlin is yeah, well, yeah. And, and the one that's <coughs> down on Old Ocean is yeah. obviously, all, obviously. All three. Yeah. Oh, they did, Spanish they did, they did yeah. 156 Spanish River is two thirds gone. Yeah. Yeah, that's really gone. Yeah, I, I just think we're. The, the problem comes in um, if we want to prohibit the demolition for any, any project that's coming before the board, we can do that. That's what the board decides um, as a course of action. However, if they have a standalone permit just for demolition, um, I don't see how I'm going to be able to, to do that by itself. Somebody just comes in and wants to demolish something without making any other reference to anything else besides the demolition and coming for a standalone demolition permit. Demolition by itself, full demolition, is a completely different yeah. animal than having you know, a partial. And I mean, I, I, you know, I, I apply for demolition all yeah. the time, but interior demolition is different than, you know, full blown exterior. Okay. So, full, <coughs> so I think you just have to look at that. Stop and take a look at that and revise. Yeah, that's revise good. Procedure. Good. When you revise. <coughs> the other comment I have, I'm really displeased, and we'll come up later, <coughs> Tracy, mm -hmm. with Lisa's. Uh, memo to us about artificial turf. Okay, can we talk about that when the item yeah, comes Yeah, I up? just want to okay. prepare everybody. Okay. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Thanks. Okay, any other comments? Let's move on to approval of our last meeting minutes. Um, any comments regarding the minutes? I have one minor correction. Page eight, uh, under <coughs> number seven, and in the middle of the second paragraph, fourth line down, signs such as real estate rather than state. So real estate signs. Good. No. Thank you, Rick. You actually read the minutes. <laughs> Any other? If not, I'll entertain.
entertain a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The minutes approved. Okay, let's move I on. I apologize, to the who second? Pardon? Who second? Second. Oh. Good. Okay, moving on to the uh, quasi judicial hearing portion of our meeting. Um, so, uh, town attorney calls for ex parte communication. Right. Has anyone had any ex parte communication on uh, 117 Marlin Drive? No. Nope. None? Oh, no. Okay. No. Okay, good. Um, swear in. Will anyone wishing to speak on this item please stand and raise your right hand? And just to make it easy, you may want to say on all of the quasi judicial items 117 Marlin Drive, 56 Spanish River Drive, and 5516 Old Ocean. Anybody wanting to speak on any of those items, if you can stand and be sworn? All righty. Okay. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly for the record and whether whether or not you have been sworn in and please speak directly into the microphone. Thank you. Good. Thank you. So our first concept plan review is 117 Marlin Drive. Um, a staff report, please. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair from the board. Uh, the applicant uh, who's coming before you has requested uh, to review a four-bedroom, four and a half uh, bath, two car garage, new single family home to be constructed on an existing lot which has a current home at 117 Marlin. The home is gonna be scheduled for demolition and the new one uh, be constructed in its place. At the present time, uh, upon preliminary review and based on the, the data calculations as provided, uh, the zoning requirements, uh, we have no objections at the point. The applicant is here to make a presentation and they'll be walking through the slides as you see in front of you, detailing each aspect of the project. Good, thank you, applicant. Thank you. Good morning, Richard Jones with Richard Jones Architecture in Delray Beach. Um, I'm happy to be joined here today by Steve Petrucci from Bella Homes and we're excited about 117 Marlin Drive. And we have a PowerPoint this morning to show you. So if we can click through, uh, we'll start with the location <coughs> on the south side of Marlin, 117. Next slide, please. Uh, we have our um, colored site plan. Uh, it's important to note, uh, as uh, Wayne had mentioned, that the design complies with the city's LDRs, we're a 5,000 square foot total structure, and we are 52% impervious. And as you can see from the slide, uh, we have quite a bit of green, uh, natural grass and landscaping. Next slide, please. And here's our site plan with all of our calculations. Uh, again, large pool deck in the back on the water. Next slide. Our civil plans uh, by Enviro Design. Uh, they've done a lot of work here in Ocean Ridge. And we have the uh, drain field uh, in the front of the house and um, the calculations um, uh, consider uh, the amount of the drain field and the septic system. Next slide. It's a two-story home, uh, great room plan. Uh, one unique feature of this house is the loggia, which is partially detached from the rear of the house. Uh, what that allows is some light wells that we have uh, that bring a lot of light down into the central portion of the house, club room. It's a U-shaped house, master down. It also has a um, uh, courtyard off the master bath and two-car garage. Next slide. Uh, second floor that is compliant uh, with the percentages for second floor area. Uh, three bedrooms uh, plus uh, loft area. And our two dimensional elevations, uh, again, a contemporary style metal roof. Uh, as you can see from the renderings, we're going with a dark, almost ebony uh, wood, simulated wood veneer to distinguish it from other homes. Next slide, please. And our side elevations. 
and then our front elevation, again a mix of uh, stucco, metal roof, and the uh, dark cladding, and then the rear um, infinity edge pool, um, that's where you see the, the loggia. Uh, we also split the loggia on the second floor, so part, part of it is covered and part of it is open air. And um, the reason for pulling it away from the house is to let light in back deep into the house because it is a U-shape. <coughs> um, Multi-level pool deck, infinity edge as mentioned, and we're gonna bring in some of the material into the dock area um, that is consistent with the house. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. There's one small administrative thing. There's a typo in the general data. Um, it says 117 Marlin, then it says 118 Marlin. And Mr. Jones, one of the things you mentioned was the dark cladding to make it unique. Mm -hmm. This particular um, exterior material list is almost identical to one that you presented on 18 Harbor Drive. That's correct. Are we, do we care about that? Yes. Okay. And, I don't. And I want, I'd like to um, make note of that at, at Mr. Um, Marsh mentioned uh, at our last meeting about the contemporary homes to, uh, that are being designed here in Ocean Ridge. I, I do want to make note that this one is in a, in a different location from the previous one at Harbor. Sure. Um, you actually have to go over a little bridge to get onto this island. Um, it's not really a drive-by kind of traffic location. Um, and so it's, we feel it's um, a significant distance from the other home. It is truly a unique home in the fact that the floor plans, if you were to look at the floor plans, are completely different. And yes, we do use some similar materials, but it's no different than if we came in with two Mediterranean style homes with two roofs that are barrel tile, maybe a different mm -hmm. color, two, two elevations that have some stone that are a different color. So it is, yes, a contemporary home and it has similar materials, but it's unique in its own right. And we'd like to have you take that into consideration. Is this a spec home? Yes, it is. And the previous one was a custom home. Right. And we do have one more that's going to be coming in soon. <laughs> it's not going to look anything like the, this one. <laughs> There's a significant amount of uh, coverage in the backyard on yes. the patio. Yes. Is, it, did you give any thought to uh, maybe making it a little more pervious back there? Well, we do have some grass uh, pervious strips, as you can see, um, that are going, I guess, north and south. If you, I don't, if you could stay on the uh, rear rendering. Yes, the last one. One more. Okay. We've incorporated in, and, and sometimes when we go to the rendering, we make fine tune adjustments on the design that don't necessarily reflect on the plan. And this is one of them that's not shown on the site plan that we incorporated some grass strips into the rear to break up the, um, the um, impervious area of the pool deck. But really, the pool deck and the driveway are the only impervious areas on the house. Um, the significant natural grass and landscaping around the sides. And um, the, the main feature of this house is the, is the waterfront. And so we wanted to have a substantial deck for entertaining and break it up with the multi-levels and the different materials. Um, I believe the landscape plan, uh, if it's not shown in the PowerPoint uh, has significant um, uh, vegetation <coughs> on both sides of the deck. It calls for Exora along the canal on the landscape plan. Is that something you're intending to do? Or yes. is it going to look more like this? Yes, well, what's on the landscape plan is what's proposed. Okay. And sometimes with these renderings, the renderers are getting so good, it's, we, we, we like <laughs> to say it's a, nice to have a little artistic license. Um, but the, the rendering uh, does not show that landscape, no. Richard, this is going to be similar to my question from you last time, but it's mm -hmm. around, um, I'm not looking specifically to the site plan, uh, but uh, 
do we have the trench drains? Do we have a swale in the front that's going to adequately retain on site uh, as much water as possible? Uh, yes, the um, Joe Pikewood Enviro design uh, designed the civil, so it does comply. There will be the the swale and the um, appropriate drainage, similar to the other. Yeah. Are there any plantings in the offsite area that uh, in the public right of way? I do not believe so. No. I believe it's just the property line. Natural grass. It's natural grass. Yes, there won't be. I don't believe there'll be any. The only place we may have some artificial grass are these little strips in the back in the pool deck. Um, but that is kind of pervious area. But it's designed to soften. And if I may approach. Thank you. Mark? Um, yeah, Richard. Um, yeah, I just, uh, my concern still stands regarding these. I know the physical location may vary, but, um, you know, this is a style that's such a transitional element. It's, it's really a hybrid, and it's neither here nor there. And mainly because of the fenestration. Yes. You know, the introduction of the more commercial storefront windows and uh, elements. I just ask, I, I respect your architecture and I, you know, I, I, it's not a negative. I know the market may be demanding some of this, but I think it's our role to, as architects to really look at it and rather than start, I don't want to use the word cookie cutter again, um, but there's a lot of similarity showing up um, and hopefully we can modify that. My only concern really is this elevation here on the amount of glass that you have. This is due south. Um, and I know you mentioned that that floating deck on the second floor is for light, which is fine. I think that's an ingenious way of doing it. But you see that area, I don't know where it is. It's on the left-hand side or right-hand side, that two-story area. Um, Again, what's the need for having these corner windows? I mean, we're flashing back to the 60s now, <laughs> and we're all the windows in every house were on the corner, and I thought we got rid of that. I mean, there's, is there any reason to have that corner window? I mean, it, <clears throat> you can see how it's on that wing, it's imbalanced in terms of the, the three units above and below, are, and you have this one corner column with a I don't know what you're trying to achieve because it is on the water, but the view is not not looking to the intracoastal. Or uh, it's just an observation. I'm not criticizing. I'm just uh, curious. No, that's fine. Curious. And, and I do appreciate your comments. I wish our last application, this one, were six or eight months apart instead of <laughs> thirty days but, apart. Um, um, and the other thing, just before you respond, is that upper uh, triple unit on the same wing. <coughs> is there any way you could? like you did on the, the, the right side or left side, create a some kind of, um, you know, uh, wing, sill that comes up from the, the floor. I mean, it just looks, uh, and these are just comments, obviously. We don't have um, yet the authority to request this. But, you know, I've quoted you many times about creating that transom, which you see on the lower, to interrupt that high vertical of glass, but it just seems like that upper um, triple unit seems a little overbearing. But um, apart from that, I again just request that let's try something new. Okay. Um, and I commend you. I, I do know that the engineer and the landscape architect, and this is one of the few applications that actually have some canopy type trees instead of every specimen of palm that is in the free world, so um, good job on that. Thank you. I appreciate your comments, Mark. <coughs> you know, I always like to say architecture is like fashion. Um, what was in the 60s and 70s sometimes comes back. Good uh, things. We, good things, right? <laughs> we, we do. I don't know if we're going to see the bell bottoms again, but we, we may. Um, and your, your comments are duly noted, and I do appreciate your comments on the, the rear glazing on the second floor. 
Um, absolutely, I've sketched it in on our plan. I think if we do that mullion that you see on the ground floor, on the second floor windows as well, either from the bottom or from the top, um, that would help to break up uh, the, the vertical nature of the glazing on the second floor. And with regards to the corner glazing, the, the corner glazing is kind of like a signature of, of this contemporary style. Um, you know, to remove the structure and have glass, you know, wrap the corner um, is, is something that just opens up the, the views and, and um, contributes to the contemporary uh, nature of the design. So um, we're showing that at the master on the left, the great room on the right, and then on the second floor, it is the, um, the guest suite or the VIP suite, I believe, um, in that bedroom. And so, you know, in bedroom four or in uh, the great room, the view, the best views out to the water on this house are uh, angular uh, right through uh, those corner windows. So uh, they are pretty important to the design. And uh, we will incorporate into the permit drawings a breakup of the glass on the second floor. And, um, and your comments about the um, style, um, we certainly will take that into consideration. We always like every house to, to be unique. And um, when we come in on the next one, um, we will certainly have something different Good. Thank to you show you. Any other board questions? If not, we'll open it up to public comment questions. Members of the public? Nobody? Okay. And any other, any further um, board uh, questions or comments? If not, um, uh, let's, let's close uh, the judicial hearing portion uh, for this particular applicant and uh, a motion and uh, a second to forward our recommendations to the zoning officials for consideration. Uh, motion? Go to that <laughs> Okay, I, I shall move. Okay, second. Okay, with, with recommendations as stated, <coughs> meaning in particular Mark's recommendation regarding the uh, second floor transit. That's correct. Good, okay, good. Um, you have that, Wayne? Second, uh, second floor transit. Okay, good. We'll okay. Right. Uh, then all in favor of the recommendation, say aye. 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 Good. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. Okay, moving on then to uh, the next item, which is um, 56 Spanish River Drive. Uh, again, um, we've already covered ex parte. Well, no, I, I just do it for each item. So is there any ex parte communication on this particular item? Okay, seeing none. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. so staff report, please. Okay. Uh, good morning. Again, uh, we've got a little different project here. This is an addition to an existing form. This is not going to be a complete uh, tear down, uh, but rather a second floor addition being added to a first floor structure. And the modifications will then be shown through the, through the process. This has been an overview of this project. It will be a two-story, seven-bedroom, six-bar, four-car garage. The, the dilemma of this particular project was because of the back and forth between the applicants and, and working with them trying to determine just how much of that structure is to be improved. We had burial, uh, various elevation issues, um, but we've come to a, 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 an agreement and an understanding that they will, by the time we get this all resolved, it will be in compliance with FEMA. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to the applicant who will walk through the PowerPoint presentation. Um, as it stands, the data sheets have been looked at. At the present time, we have no issues with the project from a zoning standpoint, and, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to the applicant now. We'll, we'll walk through the PowerPoint. Good, thanks, Wayne. 
Good morning. My name is Daryl Dahan with Integrated Architecture. Um, I'm joined today by representatives of the construction group, ACI, Rich Lasia, the local liaison architect who are from Michigan. Um, Wayne, thank you for the introduction and thanks for the good collaboration that we've had for the last six months or so. Um, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the project. Um, this home is for uh, Mr. and Mrs. Peter Sakia. They are um, 82 and 87, respectively. Um, they've been the owners for the last 25 years of this home. Um, they have, over that time, their, their, their family has grown um, to be four children and around eight grandchildren. Um, that growth in their family, this has become kind of a respite for their family um, over the last 25 years. Uh, so that growth of their family has really been the driver for this, this need for additional living space, which is primarily bedrooms um, of this home. It's currently a four bedroom, two stall garage. Um, it's, it's going, as Wayne said, to a seven bedroom, four stall garage. Um, so they've been, they've been great members of the community. In fact, um, Mr. Secchi on his, on his own for several months ago, even close to a year ago, has sent out a letter to the neighbors letting them know what was happening with the project. Um, and we've not received any opposition that we're aware of to date. Um, so again, as I mentioned, the primary goal of the project is to um, add additional living space for their growing family and to ensure that there's space for generations for years to come. Um, they don't have any intent on ever selling the home. Like I said, it's been in the family for 25 years, um, along with all their many um, um, family members that come often. So they're, they're here in, in town uh, three to four times a year for several weeks at a time. Um, so this has been, like I said, a kind of a, a nice getaway for them. Um, not to belabor any longer, but um, as Peter grows older, it's um, increasingly important to him that um, he realizes this home and holidays are a special time for him and his family, and we're really working hard to, um, to get them in by the holiday 2019. Um, so I'll quickly kind of go over an uh, overview of the project. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Home is a single family residence currently. Um, the, the garage all the way over to will be your right hand side is the additional uh, two stall garage that's being added as a requirement for the additional bedrooms. Uh, we do have the required additional parking spaces um, in the drive up front. Um, it's a large uh, kind of a split lot, it's a large area. So it's just over point, it's about 0 0.57 acres. So uh, we do meet the floor area requirement of 32%. Um, I'm not going to go into the numbers. Current existing square footage is around 5,400 square feet. Uh, we'll just be under 8,100 square feet in the end. Next slide. Um, so quickly, the areas in um, existing home. So it has a it has a detached uh, guest structure that is not substantially changing at all. In fact, we're just moving a door, uh, the door in the what will be the southwest corner, just sliding around the, the corner to where the window is now. Um, the portion in gray, the home, um, kind of primary living space, um, not a whole lot changing in that area. Um, so again, as existing plan, most of the work is to the east side, uh, kind of that blue area where the, the bedrooms and bathrooms are. Next slide. So this is the updated first floor uh, reconfiguration. You'll see the new garage uh, to the east. Uh, you'll notice that slight adjustment to um, the guest home or the door. And then just the reconfiguration of, of bedrooms in the lower level. Um, two bedrooms, an office, and a master bedroom. Again, not, nothing really primarily changing um, in the area in gray. And then a small bump out in the um, existing garage. You'll see on the, the east side of the garage, just a little bit additional room. He likes room when he opens his, um, the doors on his vehicle to not bump into the garage, so we did that for him. Along with a uh, storage addition in the, in the northwest corner. Next slide. Second floor, uh, primarily bedroom space, again, for his uh, children and grandchildren. Um, kind of a large um, multi-purpose fitness space in gray, a stair getting down to the first floor for the opening, and three additional bedrooms with uh, outdoor terrace. Next slide. Um, so this slide is important to just convey. I think there is, um, it wasn't completely clear in the, in the civil survey it indicated a finished floor ele elevation of 5.92. While that is true in the, in the area, um, I'm going to say not in green, uh, there was a 1983 addition put on the home. Um, the area dashed in a green outline. 
that floor elevation is at 6.92, so it's within a sixteenth of an inch of conforming. Um, the areas shaded in um, that are hatched in red are additions onto the existing home that would be at the 5.92 level. Um, the southernmost addition is a is a den entertainment entertainment and dining area. So to keep that on the on the um, same floor level, that will match 5.92. And then the storage addition, it just it aligns with the, um, the grade or the, the spot elevation of the, the pool terrace to the north. Um, obviously, the areas in green uh, will conform, you know, 16.75 NAVD on the second floor, and then the garage will be brought up to match um, the elevation of the 1983 addition, which is at, uh, for all intents, intents and purposes, um, 7.0. Um, so percentages of the addition um, above um, that uh, base flood elevation is around 85 percent, and the only the only areas that are not are the, the red hatched areas. Next slide. Um, so, simply the exterior the exterior materials are all to match existing. Um, the first floor is concrete structure with stucco finish. Um, the the second floor addition will be to match. Windows will match existing both style and finish and transparency. Uh, this is, you're looking at the, this is a south elevation uh, looking to the north. So the, the garage was placed in a way to, to balance the home, to be um, kind of respectful of, um, of that symmetry and did not um, off balance uh, the one side of the west. Next slide. Uh, so just some additional material notes. Um, Nothing here that we're departing from, from what exists today in appearance. Colors will match existing. Uh, garage door style will match existing. Um, um, concrete tile roof to match existing. Color, texture, size, etc. Next slide. Um, this is the elevation uh, looking north. So um, yeah, I, I'm not going to belabor this really anymore. Um, East and west elevations, both existing at the top and then uh, proposed at the bottom. And then just a few um, renderings of, again, kind of existing uh, top two images and proposed bottom two images. So you'll just see that second floor um, being added. Uh, landscape and site is, uh, is to match existing again. So landscaping is really kind of a status quo approach. Um, with patch and repair as needed. We don't, um, he loves this landscaping, no, no intent on, on changing it substantially at all. Uh, we do have a new septic field going in on the east side of the home, so obviously some rework there. Um, it's being sized obviously for the, for, for the expanded um, floor plan and bedroom, or bathrooms. And I think that's it. Any questions? Uh, board questions? I have a couple. Um, AS1A, I mean AS1.1, it looks like the drive goes over a drain area. Is that? That, that is a part of the, um, the clean out area for the septic. So there'll be a, um, a, a chamber in the drive area that'll be buried um, below. That's a new tank below grade. Is that acceptable? <clears throat> the new drain field is the structure as it was proposed shows um, going over the existing drain field. The new drain field that's going to be installed will not uh, have any structures over that. So the drain field will... It's, it says new septic tank treatment and drain field equipment. I did, I did not refer to the civil from there, though, I have to admit. Okay. Yeah, but just on AS 1.1. Yep. Um, C3 is... Uh, Probably a little bit more holistic <laughs> image um, of the of the underground septic system. So there is a um, a category four septic tank. It has a traffic bearing lid um, that would be below the drive to the new garage. Um, this has all been designed to, to county standards by our septic engineer Chad Gruber. Okay. And then I had another question: the exercise TV room could clearly be a bedroom. It's attached to a bathroom. Um, do we meet the parking 
and septic and everything if that were in fact utilized as bedroom? That's correct, because he was only required to provide three parking spaces. I went to four parking space requirements. Um, when looking at rooms that could be used as a bedroom in Kelly Right. Yeah. It looks like it could be an so eight bedroom home, that. not seven. Because they originally did not want to add the additional garage, uh, but because of our new ordinance, that change was added to the project. Right. Okay, good. <clears throat> um, somewhere between the package and right today, there was a determination that you were going to recalculate Correct. Some of the space and yes. And I think I think there was a change in the the new garage. Yes. Being a bit smaller. Correct. And what what was the particular reason for that? It was a floor the the FAR. We were slightly over, so we had to find some square footage. Okay. So we went around the home, and the garage length was one of the areas that we found some square footage to get to the thirty two percent. Any other? Board questions? Um, yeah, Wayne, this non compliance with the NABD, um, I think you said on your report that this complies with FEMA. Yes. Was and, well, my, let me just finish the question. This is obviously more than 50% of improvement. This is a substantial improvement based on the property appraiser's data sheet. Uh, the applicant is going to be and has not at this point in time, but we'll be providing the appraisal report showing okay. the existing structure. Um, and it's not, it will not be uh, classified on the FEMA's directive as a substantial improvement. But I assume he's going to have a marketing appraisal. <coughs> to substantiate. We, we, have a, we have a fair market replacement value appraisal complete, and the permittable um, construction cost is within 50% of the replacement value of the structure. Okay. I do this for a living, too. <laughs> okay. I, I leave it up to yeah. our building official um, because this is. This is a large project. I mean, the site can handle it technically. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I tend to think that the second story helps the, the building because currently it's a, just a linear yeah. strip. It's long and low. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on that linear aspect, one of the recommendations I would make is <coughs> if you go back, go back through your elevations, just the flat elevation. One more. South elevation. Yeah, stop there. Thank yep. you. I really, I have a problem with that. <clears throat> I suppose it's a privacy wall in the front. I think that is really objectionable. I think, you know, even if it exists now, I would ask that you, as an architect, look at that, because you're 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 landscaping as by admittance is not going to change, and I think I have a problem <coughs> with the amount of landscaping. Again, every species here is a palm except for two token tabs, which are not the most <coughs> uh, canopy uh, type trees. Uh, I just think to present that to the neighborhood and the town is, is really um, a slap in the face because it's it, it looks like a compound, and by your description, you know, the family are going to use it as that. So I would just request that either that wall be reduced in height and, again, some additional planting to offset, you know, the scale, both horizontally and vertically. Um, as I said, I think the massing is improved, but I, I just think you've got to mitigate it somehow. This is a large house in a relatively small area. These, some of these lots on adjacent are wider, but um, because your, your, your driveway on the front is on the right-of-way line, so there's nothing to plant on the street side of it. Um, so if you could comp uh, you know, mitigate by reducing the wall, just kind of letting the, the house show better, and I think from a, 
a living standpoint, you'd rather have, you know, some more street appeal than, than you're showing here. And what are the materials again? What's the flat roof? Uh, concrete tile. What color? It's a gray, light gray. And the yellow? Stucco. Which paint. is what's there now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. But landscaping needs to be addressed then. Again, there's the modification of that privacy wall. Rick, thank you. Anything else, Mark? No, I may bounce back to you. Uh, my comments are pretty much directly at staff because it addresses uh, the public right away, uh, the, the town property. is. Staff knows that we have uh, significant drainage issues on Spanish River Drive uh, and the outfall of any water to the street from this property uh, will go to that uh, drainage area to the west. Um, and there's a significant amount of uh, paving. Uh, I know some of it's existing that's in the public right of way. Any effort that could be done to reduce that would be uh, very helpful. We need to see trench drains in the engineering uh, to make sure that any outfall is limited and those trench drains are tied into uh, to the drainage system, not just uh, retained on site. And, uh, and most importantly, uh, this needs to comply with the public, with the swale uh, and the plantings that now exist in the Birmingham and the right of way uh, do not meet the uh, town's requirements and there needs to be a, a full swale and um, Preferably this area be in lawn that can be uh, 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 percolated and, uh, and uh, you know, it's the public site. It's not the, uh, not the property owner's property and uh, it needs to come into compliance. We, um, we haven't gone to engineering as of yet. However, we would, we're going to make sure that these, these comments are addressed at that, at that point. Um, and any encroachments into the right of way will be looked at and worked through with the applicant to get that vegetation removed and uh, making sure that the grass is allowed with a swale that allows water to percolate. That, that's how it will be, will be, will be and, done. And the, the driveway pitches so that there is a swale, swale through the driveway. driveway. Uh, it will be a swale in the driveway so the, as well. But so this property's water stays on this property. No, I, I just, again, for the architect's sake, um, these are recommendations. I, I didn't get a feeling of response from you. <laughs> no, and, and I was going to follow up with that. If that's something that uh, typically is worked through on a staff level, um, our, our response to your um, recommendations, whether that's um, additional openings in the wall or shortening of it, it sounds like it's a combination of that as well as landscaping. Um, how a response can be prepared. Is that handled then at a staff level? Correct. Yeah, we're prepared to respond I mean, I to just, that. I, I appreciate your response. Okay, thank you. And, and may I add, in addition to maybe shortening the wall and more openings, maybe some articulation uh, on the wall. Thank you. I, 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 I agree with, with Mark's <laughs> comment. We're, we're not looking at Ocean Ridge to have compounds for people to come in from other parts of the country and be isolated. We want integrated uh, homes that are part of the community. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, good and I, I, I agree with that. That's good a point. good point. I, the, the wall kind of troubled me. And I, I normally, I just think it's the, the owner's preference should rule, but it's a little much. Okay. We'll address that. Um, no other board comments or questions? No public comment? Public questions? Yes, Terry. I, I stood and got sworn in. Terry Brown hovered us up for the earlier uh, review, so I'm okay for the rest of them? Yes, the swearing in was good. <laughs> Thank for you. Him. I didn't want there to be a problem with that. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about what uh, Rick Carey said about the drainage in the driveway. We're talking about the swale being, uh, unless the code is changed, uh, from the asphalt six inch drop. That's the swale where it's supposed to retrieve the water. So the, the, this 
is a big project and it has all this driveway and you're going to have, if it's full of people during the winter months, you're going to have a lot more than four vehicles there. So are some of these folks going to be parking into the right of way, even though it's on a paved strip? Now we find that around town in older, smaller homes where you have cars stacked up and they're actually almost out to the asphalt edge, but they're on the town right of way. So what is the situation with that? Overnight, you're not supposed to park on the street, but can these vehicles park all the way to the uh, asphalt beyond the right of way? That's a question I have with a house like this with so many people visiting during the winter months. That's something someone needs to think about in terms of parking. The parking that's identified here will be in the circular driveway, not on the swale portion. So when we when we counted for the actual cars, uh, which would be uh, four additional cars, so it's four inside and four outside the car. But we're talking about visitors and other people coming during the winter months, which I assume is what the home is going to be used for primarily as a winter home. The police officers are going to drive by, but they're they're not going to give anyone a ticket if they're parking. <laughs> to the edge of the asphalt. So I'm just kind of curious as to, can we shrink, as, as uh, Rick pointed out, shrink the paved area so that they can't get as many cars in there. Does that make sense? <laughs> Otherwise, you make it wide enough, you're going to have uh, maybe 10, 12 cars there at night. That's an exaggeration, but it's a, it's a point that I see all over town with the parking being stacked up up to the asphalt. Just a comment. The other comment that I have, um, I'm a little bit confused. I, I served on the Board of Adjustments for 10 years, um, so I know a little bit about the um, elevation issue. We're talking about allowing new construction with elevation below the code. Uh, I mean, that would be a variance to the Board of Adjustments, to get, even though it sounds simple. No, that's what, that's what we're saying. The, the new construction portion has to meet the code. Okay. The question becomes, what do you do with the existing construction that's there? Because it's over 50%. Because, because it's over 50%. It has to be brought up to the existing code. However, one of the criteria that is allowed on the FEMER guidelines, which is a loophole, but it does exist, and it is allowed by law, if that structure, as verified, with the property uh, with an appraisal value of less than 50% of the existing, then it does not meet the definition of substantial improvement, and therefore that elevation of that first floor does not have to be raised. And, and, that, and that can be done administratively, and it will be documented somewhere. It has to be. It yeah. has to be. Well, you, um, you're, you're relying on the property appraiser's assessment, the, so which is always be, low. Correct, but the, this, the, the applicant is aware that they're working with the property appraiser currently to make that adjustment to reflect the true number of that structure as it stands. Yeah. So that's one component that's being taken place currently. Um, the second one that's, that's taken place as well is a bona fide appraiser report from a state of Florida licensed appraiser is, is, is discussion is that it's going to be provided as well okay. to show reflect on the true market value of what the structure is. So Thank you. So basically you're saying they're going back to the property appraiser's office yes. to get their appraised value increase so that the new appraisal <laughs> will not show a 50%. That is correct. I'm so glad we have her on the board. <laughs> that is correct. So our taxes, our tax base will go up. That is correct. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very first. Much. Any other public comment questions? Okay, uh, how about board comment questions? Okay, if not, I will entertain a motion of recommendation uh, subject to uh, the comments being number one, the, uh, the, the screening wall in front, uh, Mark's comments, and number two, in particular, the drainage comments. And also the comment regarding the septic tank to be not being that pervious here. Yes, so that, those three comments will be addressed. Okay, good. Yes. And the appraisal. And your appraisal has to be reported. <laughs> right. Okay, good. Uh, okay, a motion of recommendation, please. I close the judicial hearing. Therefore, a motion of uh, recommendation. No. I'll make a motion subject to the uh, list of comments that. Seconded. I second. All 
in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Okay, moving along to uh, the next item on the agenda, which is um, um, concept plan review for 5516 Old Ocean Boulevard. Uh, right, ex parte communication by board members. None. Uh, seeing none. Okay, thank you. Good. Um, report. What we have for the property address in question is 5516 Old Ocean Boulevard. This is an existing home uh, which is being renovated at the present time, and the uh, the owners wish to make the modification mostly to the second floor uh, bedroom expansion um, and, and the balcony. The, when once completed, this four bedroom, five bath, five and a half bath uh, will also include a maid's quarters. So during the calculations, we've classified this as a five bedroom uh, structure, not a four. Uh, when, while, when doing the calculations. The applicant also has to take this before the uh, DEP Coastal Construction Board uh, for approval due to the location and proximity to the ocean itself. The applicant is here to make the presentation. At the present time, we haven't got any objections to the zoning requirements as presented. Good morning, Don Durante, Randall Stoft Architects, 42 North Swinton, Delray Beach, Florida. Um, thank you, Wayne, for your pre short presentation, but uh, I'd like to go through a couple slides um, that we have presented today just to uh, give an overview of the project. If you can go to the next slide, please. That is the project location. It's located south of Beachway Drive and east of Old Ocean uh, and Tropical Shores. It is an existing two-story single-family residence. And if you could go to the next slide. Okay, so the area in red is currently a two-story covered patio, which extends the whole east side of the two-story structure. The area in blue we are proposing uh, to enclose uh, pool equipment and a generator. The uh, second story that we're proposing is in addition to the master bedroom. And the purpose for that is to bring the view closer to the ocean, because currently it's set back about 15, 17 feet uh, from the edge of the building. So we wanted to bring the, the master bedroom closer to the view. If you could go a couple more slides. These are just uh, existing conditions. Okay, so this, go back one more slide, sorry. Okay, so this is a uh, 54 square foot addition of pantry area off the kitchen. Um, it is, again, under existing roof, so we're not extending any uh, footprint area all under existing roof. Go to the next slide, please. Okay, this, this slide indicates in red the 435 square foot addition of master bedroom area. The blue is 221 square feet of master terrace, non-air conditioned. Again, it's just to bring the view closer to the ocean so the owner can enjoy the beach that much more and the view. You go to the next slide, please. Okay, the area in yellow is currently a gable end, and we can look at the um, existing pictures in a couple, couple more slides, but we're proposing to change this to a hip roof. Um, we would like to renovate the exterior of the structure to um, have a more contemporary feel, and you'll see that in the next couple of slides. Okay. If you freeze here, this is how the current house exists as quite a lot of Mediterranean 
precast elements, decorative elements that the owner would love to eliminate, and we're proposing to do that. Um, go to a couple more slides. Okay, some pictures. Go back one, please. Okay, this is existing conditions of the house. It's got a uh, clay barrel roof tile. Um, you can see there's quite a few Mediterranean precast elements on the house that, again, we would, we would like to remove and um, create a structure that's a little more contemporary in nature. Go back one slide, please. I'm sorry, one more forward. Okay, right there. Okay. Uh, the slide on, on the top left is the two-story covered patio area that is in question. So we, we are proposing to bump out that second, second floor uh, master bedroom area and adds about 435 square feet of air-conditioned space and 221 square feet of, of terrace. Okay, this is the proposed front elevation. Um, the front entry door um, we're proposing to change, um, square. Quite a few of the windows that are currently have an angle to them or an arch to them, um, proposing to flatten those out, again, to create a more contemporary feel. Uh, we would like to change the garage door to uh, uh, an aluminum and glass garage door front. And again, we're not increasing any, any footprint, footprint area that's under roof currently. And we, we do meet uh, the town of Ocean Rinda, all, all the LDRs in terms of floor area, uh, lot coverage, impervious, pervious area. Okay, this is a, a, a proposed rear elevation on the left, the bottom image. On the left, you can see the addition of um, windows and the master ter terrace area on the second floor. And that's it. I'll entertain any questions. Four questions. Uh, uh, this house has a massive porta cachet, um, more akin to what you would see at a hotel or a clubhouse. That's correct, uh, yes. That's uh, the impact of that from the street elevation is compounded that it's at a uh, elevation significantly higher that is than, than the street. Has consideration been given to uh, eliminating the porta cachet and, and creating a more residential feel uh, to the institutional look of the building? The, the owner has indicated he does not want to do that. There was, really has not been any, any discussion in regards to that. What's, what's the height to that? Porta cachet from the from the drive. I believe it's 22 feet. So it is it is pretty it, massive. I understand. Just, it, and it's not. It can't be appreciated through these drawings. You have to see it to understand because you, of yeah. because of the um, the mass. It's a 10,000 square foot under roof. So it's not one of our 3,500 4,000 square foot houses that we're usually looking at. It, everything's bigger. Yes. And uh, it just, it could be much better. The, 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 that could be something we could discuss with the owner. So, for sure. Thank you, Rick. Uh, the the uh, new front door is pretty substantial, is it not? It is, but it, the, the current front door there is also pretty substantial as well. Is it 10 well. feet tall? It is 8 feet tall, but it also, it has transom windows above it. Uh -huh. um, so it, it goes up to an elevation of about 17 <clears throat> overall. Mark, I think the existing house takes the cake for being the ugliest house in this town. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, until you go and look at it, you drive by it on old ocean or walk by it and <laughs> it really doesn't, but when, as you did obviously, go in and look at it, it's, it really is. Terrible. Um, this is an improvement. Simplifying it is good, but I agree with Rick that entry portico is so out of scale um, with the rest of the house and the massing. Um, the color is that kind of deep gray. Is that uh, yeah, the color. It's not a deep gray. It's more of a lighter gray. It didn't didn't come off as, as 
as quite as we wanted it to in the rendering, but it is a lighter gray. Yeah, I just caution you. I mean, it's you don't want to highlight it, but if you make it dark or too dark, it's going to even have more mm -hmm. impact on the neighborhood. Um, the thing that bothers me most is, unless I'm misreading it, the landscaping is going to remain as is. That's correct. And I think I would plead that we introduce some substantial planting to, again, I use the word mitigate the scale of this. Sure. Because it is sitting up at about seven foot elevation off the front road. Yeah. And then it goes up 22 feet. You know, it just keeps going up and up. Um, I mean, just to have anything done to that house is a, an improvement. But um, please, if you can heed some of the recommendations here. Certainly. About scale. Certainly will do. Um, I think that's fine. Good. Thank you, Mark. Um, there, there was a question, and it may not come into play, Wayne, because of the amount of which is being done. But on A311, the AC units um, are on the front of the house currently, front elevation. Um, and is that permitted? I'm asking, I guess, if they are currently there and if it is permitted to stay there because it is shown on the front elevation four units to the left of the front door, and I didn't go further, but is that screen, if they are allowed to remain there, are they screened? They will have to be screened. Are they allowed on the front elevation because we have an ordinance that's yes. coming up that says they can't be? Correct. Um, if if I may, the, the units are the front on the front, and they are existing. currently existing, and they are screened currently with, I believe, ficus hedge. It's okay. about five feet tall. Mm -hmm. If you could go back to uh, some of the existing it. pictures. Yeah. So you can see on the left, um, there's a ficus hedge there. That's and these are unique lots because the frontage and the addresses. No, you have Old the same. Ocean. I have the same situation. Old, Old ocean. ocean. Yeah. So it may be, but again, screening would be helpful. But please, um, Wayne, can we? See a, a new landscape plan. Is that a reasonable request? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. And did we decide? Are you going to discuss with the owner something about the, the portico? Because it's pretty homely. Yes, we we'll, we'll discuss with with okay. the with the owner. Well, what else can we do? See see what else we can do there. It just seems a shame to put this much effort into the house. And a lot of expense, and we're they're kind of going only part way there. And uh, I, I know it costs more to do more, but right. in the long run, uh, it's going to benefit them. And they bought this house fairly recently at a very high price, and I, I think that they want it to be. Uh, I would think that they would would want more than what's shown here. Cost becomes an issue with, with the owner at this point. He'd like to spend his money more so on the addition with the master, with the view, not so much on the front, but we'll discuss it with him, see sure. if there's something else we can do. Thank and, you. And I have one more question of Wayne. There was a letter in here from Florida Department of Health, um, and it says, extending the master bedroom only, no additional bedrooms added. I know when you were giving your report, the first thing you said was there is a maid's quarter, so you did your calculations based on five bedrooms, Correct. not four. Did they? Did um, they utilize five bedrooms? I will over, I'll double check that number with them okay. uh, to, to ensure that. Are you going back to the format by chance? This no, we five. have. We're done. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'll verify that with them before okay. anything else. Good I'll take point. Us a note. Yeah. Thanks. Good. Uh, public comment? Public questions? If, if not, uh, back to the board. Uh, we have three recommendations on the table, um, maybe four. Number one is uh, modification of the port of mm -hmm. uh, Number two is addition of landscaping. Mm -hmm. uh, number three is toning down the dark gray as much as possible, lightening it up. Okay. And uh, also, Penny's comment regarding uh, making sure that that base quarters doesn't change uh, the Right, good, okay. So those are the, the three and a half, four recommendations on the table. <clears throat> With those recommendations in mind, um, 
we'll close the judicial, quasi-judicial hearing portion of the meeting and go to a vote. Um, did you get public comment? Oh, we did. No public comment. Nope. Yeah, good. Okay, so therefore, uh, <laughs> close the judicial hearing and uh, go to a vote with those recommendations. And, uh, uh, so we need a motion to recommend approval or recommend going forward. No motion. Uh, I'll recommend we go forward with the four items that we discussed. Good. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the um, uh, code amendment regarding generators. <coughs> so, um, staff report, please. Okay. Um, yeah, basically, I'll just start this out and then turn it over to Wayne. Uh, this came in front of you at your last meeting based on the building officials' uh, request that we modify this because of the difficulty, I think, that he is experiencing in uh, having people locate generators um, primarily in their side yard setbacks because of the requirements of the town. When this was, and, and you all had approved it at that point in time, when this was sent to the uh, council or to the commission, they had some questions as well. And then basically, what we ended up doing was pulling the ordinance or postponing it to, and we modified some of the language to bring it back in front of you. And then we'll go forward again to the uh, commission based on. You know, I guess your thoughts, or if you if you have some further work that needs to be done. Uh, I guess, in a nutshell, we had previous what you had previously approved was to allow the generator to be set back. Uh, I guess five feet into the property line, and there was no. Um, comments on where the exhaust of the generator was going to be because I think that's the offending part. And I guess at this point in time, if I can just turn it over to Mr. Cameron so that he can uh, take it from there. in advance for the confusion. <laughs> what we're trying to accomplish here is to have the exhaust of the generator not uh, provide carbon monoxide poison to the residents. As it currently stands, the current ordinance as it stands, it's very difficult to locate a generator and then there, there is uh, no guidelines establishing clearly where that needs to be, and that's what we're trying to do with this ordinance. So we're going to define the point of where the exhaust discharge is going to be. So it needs to be 10 feet from the property line and 10 feet from any opening. However, the actual generator itself will not be any closer than what it stands uh, currently, which will be 10 feet from a property line just like any air conditioning equipment or anything else. Well, well, if, if I can correct, I mean, it's five feet. It's currently, it's five feet from it's the property line. It's currently five feet. And that's what we're still line. providing for is five feet. The generator itself can be five feet from the property line, the, the exhaust. exhaust. Correct. Thanks, Brian. So the exhaust itself will be 10 feet. The generator itself, as it stands in the current ordinance, will remain as far as the, the from the property line. We're not bringing it any closer to a property line. But we're talking as it refers to the exhaust itself. So what ends up happening logistically, that generator could physically be five feet from the home or just outside that electrical panel, which is where they usually are located, closer to the home. But the exhaust itself is 10 feet from a window or door or any other opening. So with that, I'll turn it over for questions. So, I mean, I'm, I'm in the process of installing a generator at my home. And um, generators are, for home generators, uh, like a 22 kW generator, which is generally a residential size, Mark, uh, is 24 inches wide by 40, 40, 48 inches long. Right. The exhaust itself is part of the generator unit. Correct. Okay, so where is the exhaust? The discharge, that point where in, think of it like the, 
exhaust of a car muffler. Um, wherever that point is, is right. where I'm taking as a measurement. But this, this gets to be quite complicated because it, this, if we're doing, we're going to go forward with what you're proposing, we're going to have to be basically 10 feet away from the property line and 10 feet away from uh, any home opening, which is 20 feet, which is, in most <coughs> cases, very difficult to achieve. Because our setback is 15 feet, and, and therefore, you really, we might be boxing ourselves in to a situation where uh, the generators just don't work because of the, uh, the distances required. Let, 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 me, let, me, let me answer the 10 feet from the property line question so that we get clarification. I'm, work, I'm basing this based on a 15 foot, like in the diagram of a 15 foot setback right here. So the generator, if you're gonna think of your generator itself, where it's five feet off from the home, now we've got four feet of that actual generator. Uh, but that's only if you're, if you're going east to west. The generator itself doesn't have to go that way. It could be um, going parallel with the home itself. Right, which is usually the case. Which is what is happening. So if it's going parallel with the home, then we're only talking about oh, two feet that is really going closer towards the property line. So that five becomes, but well, still five feet where the actual exhaust is. So that one point in time still gives me my 10 feet. But if you're thinking about five and then 10, if you think about it being parallel, the generator itself being parallel, you'll see how the 10 feet is still attainable. And, 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 and we're measuring the point of exhaust. It hasn't gone into that five foot encroachment of, of as the ordinance currently says, because five and two is only seven. So we still have another eight feet more to go before we're into an issue. Let me just say, the 10 foot to an opening is a life safety ordinance. You can't, Mr. Cameron, as the building official, cannot approve anything. Totally agree. Do, do, yeah, they, so. do they make like uh, exhaust extensions for these go things? Up. That you can go, go up. up. They, can, they, they, they can also go up. So the that would be the rule, the rule still applies. However, whatever goes up has to be securely fastened. So right. it doesn't. So would it be something that would be part of a variance, maybe? Or? It's a question that it has to be part of the building package. It would okay. be looked at from a mechanical standpoint. If what they're proposing can be attainable or not. So that whole mechanics of the exhaust and the exhaust discharge, it comes as, as far as the plan review portion. What we're talking about here is the physical equipment location mm -hmm. of that actual generator right. and the location at where it's going to be as it sits on the ground. And th the, this was a question I had last meeting and I guess I didn't, uh, if the setback is less than 15 feet, and in a lot of the lots it is. Um, how does somebody put a, a uh, generator on the side of their house? Do they get a variance? Because we're showing 15 feet here, but I, last meeting I pointed out that when I measured the number of homes on my street, none of them really had more than 13 feet, including well, my own. Well let's, well, let's go with that thought for a second. Okay. If you have 13 feet, instead of it being five feet from the home, it'll uh -huh. be three feet from the home now. Still having you 10 feet on okay. the property line. It's just closer to the home at that point. Right. That's really what it is. And, and they generally do bring it close, but I still want to make sure that the exhaust itself sure. is 10 feet from any opening okay. at the end of the day. And one thing that happened when I put mine in, I had to take a window and make it a fixed window, not a window that opens. Open. So I still have the light in, but it's a fixed opening. Yeah. So then the generator works. And I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. Or, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I appreciate the 10 feet life safety thing. That yeah, absolutely is critical. Um, what other communities, similar communities, Wayne, have, have you checked to see what their ordinances might be with regard to uh, generators and exhaust? They, they, Generators actually in smaller areas, even looking at zero lot lines, where you only have five feet, um, have managed to, to locate that. However, what they've done is no openings on that within a type yeah. of 10 foot um, of area. So wow. generators are still being able to be accomplished. However, the, the, the whole issue of, of, of life safety and not getting carbon monoxide poisoning, that's been the thrust. So the keep of those 10 feet or greater from any opening has been the, the, the predominant. And I, and I totally agree. 
my question really has to do with uh, the, the exhaust. And, and is, that, is the exhaust factor mentioned in other ordinances? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, that's a building code. Yeah. It's, not in a, it's not a zoning, it's a building code. Right. right. So, and, and is it marked in, like in Palm Beach? Is the exhaust location a, a, a consideration? Yes. It is. It's a life safety. It's a building code. It supersedes zoning. It's kind of like running your but lot, uh, car in the yeah. garage. Not, lot, I'm not building. I guess no, oh, no. But yeah. Lot line. Lot line. That's my question. Relative to the lot line, not the building. I can't say. You're allowed to go five feet in most areas. You can go five feet from the property line. I mean, just because on, on a zero lot line, it's a little longer than the generators. So that's my concern. I, I totally agree. The whole generator needs to be, including the exhaust, needs to be 10 feet away from any home opening. Period. Okay. Yeah, it currently says five. Our current ordinance says five feet. And we're changing that. We're changing it. We're changing it. Ab absolutely. No question about it. Uh, and then five feet from the property line, no question about it. Uh, my question is the additional 10 feet relative to the exhaust and the generator. So my question is. Do other ordinances address the location of the exhaust relative to the property line? I haven't seen it being addressed specifically. Okay. Well, that's uh, this, 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 this address the generator location. That's yeah, the generator. Yeah. And, no, it I just try to make it specific to, to answer the question in terms of okay. what am I identifying and it is the exhaust. I, I'm getting confused because I've heard several things which I think are in conflict, uh, at least they sounded in my ear. I think I heard Brian say that the code is five feet from the property mm -hmm. line. I yeah. think I've heard Wayne say ten, we keep the generator. Ten, now, this is not about exhaust. Let's just talk about generator the generator five. itself. Five. And I think you had said something about keeping the generator 10 feet from the property line. And Jerry just said we want to make sure we keep the generator 10 feet from the house. Yeah. Um, uh, my, I, let's, the exhaust is life safety codes, I, very clear. My preference in thinking about it is put it as close to the house as you can and as far from the neighbor as you can, uh, just like an air conditioner unit would be, keeping in mind that the exhaust has to be 10 feet away. I don't want our code to be that the homeowner can force his generator away from his home and towards his neighbor's home, uh, that doesn't uh, make sense to me. Um, I think it should be like an air conditioner unit. You need it, some room to service it. But as long as it's meeting the life safety code, then put it next to the home. Um, I totally agree. And my only comment has to do with the additional five feet from the property line with regard to the exhaust. And I'm suggesting that we take a look at other ordinances to see if the exhaust factor is mentioned and how it's dealt with. That's the unusual factor in what we're proposing here. It's exhaust. Everything is 10 feet away from the opening of the house, life safety, done. Five feet away from the property line, done. Okay. It's only the exhaust issue that I'm, I'm questioning. But, but I'm saying five feet from the property line, not necessarily done. If the homeowner has the room to put it closer to his home, why should it be allowed to be shoved over closer to his neighbor's home? Most places have an ordinance to provide for an offset out the building as well. It's usually five, to be honest. Right. So it's five and five. Right. And this I, says a minimum of five right. from the property line. So I think now I've gone back and gotten confused because the generator is five from the property line minimum. The right. exhaust is ten. Right. That's the key. Right. Well, I think that's the ten, as Jerry said. The exhaust is the issue there. The exhaust How is the issue. How close can it be to the property line? Exactly. That's Mark that simple. It's, it's that simple. Uh, I think the only way that this would really work is if you put the generator perpendicular to the property line, which in most cases you don't see that. No. So that's the one issue that we have with this is that the in order for this to in order for someone to take 
advantage of this ordinance as far as where the exhaust is located it would almost be perpendicular to the property line which would then create other issues probably for the property owner because you have this longer mechanism you know box there kind of blocking your side yard setback so um, I, I think we, we need to pass that portion of the ordinance the amendment that deals with 10 feet away from opening in the hub like said is period well, I mean, and that's the, that's the already testing. in the building code, yeah. so it can't okay, good. Um, it, it can't okay. be that nobody I'm could do that anyway. I'm not approving anybody unless it means right. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, so we I, also need just, to include the testing. Yeah, the testing is good. I, I, why not? I mean, Mark, uh, that's more. Is, have you incurred any issues with today's yes. version of generator? Uh, again, it depends on the size of the generator, right. and that's okay. you know, anything over 30 or 40 should have Thank a hush you. box. Good. Uh, Okay. Each town has a decibel level, but and I think we can adopt that pretty quickly. Do I most agree. meet our? Do most generators today will they meet our decibel level through the we'll testing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I just had a twenty-two kW installed last week, and when it when it goes off in the morning to test on the weekend there at nine o'clock. Um, it's louder than a lawnmower, so I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? So I don't know how it's going to meet because you have a pretty, currently in your code now, which is existing, you have a fairly, what I would consider, low decibel reading for generators, and that's the reason we put in language in here that prior to a permit finalization, they're going to have to meet that because it wouldn't surprise me that you know, I guess anybody who's installing a generator now after this is adopted um, would have to take other measures to quieten the generator noise. But I mean, I'm just, you know. So, can we find out what, for example, a typical 22 kW generator, today's version, generates in terms of noise, and then kind of... Um, Correspond to that as a measure of decibel reading after the fact. I mean, I, I, we just, we also put the time limit on when they could run their weekly test, exactly. being after okay. eight a.m. Yeah. So it, it happens. I mean, every they wake yeah. me up on Saturday mornings with a lawnmower at eight fifteen across the way, and it's actually louder than it's actually louder than my generator. But um, <laughs> since we've accommodated that, I mean, we can be too picky. Can we go back to the drawing board? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Well, hey, I, I have one more comment, and this is this is significant because I think back on prior storms because this kind of becomes a have and have not thing. Right. And uh, I can think back to Wilma, uh, which we had power out in most of this town for a couple of weeks, but it was very inhabitable. So you're. You're, if you don't have a generator, you're living with your windows open while your neighbor's generator is just on 24-7. We need to be conscious of that. Not everybody's going to have generators, and we don't want just the wealthy town people uh, having their generators in the AC while the others listen to it five foot off their property line. Get a cable. We've <laughs> 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 had them all over our neighborhood. Yeah, really, 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 really. Okay, let's move on then. So, yeah. so I think the... Con public, comment. the oh. public comment. Public comment. Yeah. Is that okay? Thank you. Um, Terry Brown, Harbor Drive South. This came up a few years ago because the person wanted to put the generator right next to um, the electrical panel as it comes in from the, from the street. It was underground conduit. But there wasn't enough room for him to put the tank for the propane. So he was told that he had to put it on the other side of the house, which, of course, he ultimately did, but he went bonkers because he had to pay for that new conduit from the generator all the way uh, uh, through the crawl space of his house over to the other side of the house where the main panel was. So, uh, but, but he was able to get the propane tank in the ground. So there is a way to do this. There's always a way to work around it. I mean, I was looking at, thinking of my own house. I couldn't put it where the panel is now because there's three windows in a row, and they're, they're all less than 10 feet. So I would have to pay, I would have to be one of those suckers that would have to pay 
the extra expense of the conduit going all the way back the other way. So there is a fix one of your windows. Huh? Huh? Fix one of the windows. That's right. <laughs> well, I want to get out of the house if it burns down. <laughs> thanks. Okay, thanks. So I think based on the consensus of the commission here, then I guess we will kind of take a look at it and see if we can come up with something else, but right. we'll see where that right. goes. Thank you. Last okay. item on the agenda is uh, um, regarding synthetic turf. Is there a motion to approve the Good morning, Commissioner. Before we start, um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mark, uh, I have a little bit of an issue. With all due respect, Lisa. Yeah. We'd asked staff and our consultant, uh, who isn't here today, um, Mark. 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 Sorry. But we're getting this presentation that's supporting synthetic turf. In some cases. Yeah, in some cases, but I, I, I find this kind of offensive. I must admit mm -hmm. that, you know, we're promoting synthetic turf consulting. What we really want to do is to try to find out what other people, what other towns are doing regarding mainly, especially front yard. Nobody's Got discounting it. the potential to use um, AstroTurf in certain areas. The driveways are perfect, you know, where you have those grass strips. Mm -hmm. Or in the rear of your, your yard. What the concern is that we don't propagate a whole town of artificial astroturf on the front yard. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's what we're trying to find. Am I, where did I go wrong here? No, no I, I felt like this was a sales presentation. Yeah, I, it, okay. could, it could I, have I been was, presented by the astroturf. Yeah. Uh, foundation or well so I, I take full responsibility for that okay I had heard I didn't go to the last P and Z meeting I had heard there was discussions about synthetic turf mm -hmm. and in order to because you guys pay me by the hour to try to be efficient I created I got this I did this in like a half an hour mm -hmm. okay yep. I took I took the mechanics from from the St synthetic turf Institute in case there were some technical questions it's just about the technical part. There's like three or four slides. I put that together with a few pictures, and that was it. If I spent more than an hour, um, I was just trying to be efficient. So I apologize if it comes off as a sales pitch. I just wanted you all to understand that about eight years ago in this town, it was absolutely no way, no way, no way. Don't even come in here with an application of, and, and by the way, this isn't your grandfather's AstroTurf. Totally evolved, totally evolved. Okay, so um, Mr. Melnick came in, presented his proposal. No way, I didn't approve it. Um, went through a lot of uh, research. This was about maybe six or seven years ago. A lot of research. Um, they gave me a lot of information, gave me perk rates, gave me technical information. Um, I did approve it. And I have pictures in there that I bet you you can't tell the difference between where Mr. Melnick started his synthetic turf and where his natural grass is. So I didn't mean for this to be a sales pitch, and I, again, I take full responsibility for that. I just wasn't sure if you guys wanted to talk a little bit about the technical parts of it because it is not your grandfather's astroturf. It's called synthetic turf, and they, like I said, they've come a long way. Now, what we have been doing here is when people present to us the, prob the probability or, the, or um, a proposal to put in synthetic turf, we look at several things. I mean, obviously, a percolation rate has to perk better than sod, which when it's done properly and it's infilled properly and we have a proper cross-section and we have all the specifications, um, it has a better, it's, it's better than sod. And so we look at that and we also look at where. So Mark, you're right, in, there are many driveways throughout town that have synthetic turf in between 
the marble squares, and you wouldn't know the difference. It's gorgeous. I think Mr. Melnick's property is never received the complaint. No, if the question is where, um, we do take we do take a lot of time in consideration because of the fact that septic tanks and drain fills are located in the front of people's properties for the most part, it has not really been approved anywhere in the front of anyone's home. Yeah, I, I, I don't so, mean to step into it because okay. um, time-wise. Um, yeah, I think what, what the request, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we just wanted, because I brought it up because of the new one up down the road okay. that has a full front yard. and. We need to address it now and nip it in the bud before it gets out of hand. I've used synthetic turf, turf. Okay. for, as you said, for grass strips in between. Mm -hmm. Melnix is fine because it's mitigated by a 12 or 15 foot hedge. You, you wouldn't be aware of it. Um, it's in front of the hedge. Well, it's actually in the public yeah. right of way, correct? Right. right. I, I don't know how he got that anyway. So. But I know his driveway has it as well. And what I object to a little bit, the statement, and yes, synthetic turf consulting may be the top, but just let me yeah. finish. There are going to be many forms of artificial turf. Some Correct. of them are going to be spectacular, and some of them are going to be really bad. Mm -hmm. And if we start approving that in the front yard, okay. we have no control over the quality of what this looks like. Okay. Plus, I don't think, again, I, I'll, I'll be very vocal, I don't think we want our town to look like Disney World or, mm -hmm. um, you know, lose that kind of soft, in some cases, even if the grass is long, it makes it feel more natural. So, I, I, I took this just as a promotional approach to it when we really want to look at how we're going right. to, by ordinance, you know, control right. the use of it. Nobody's, I don't think anybody's saying in the rear yard or wherever, if you right. want to use it for practical purposes, but I, I'm, I'm more sensitive to the front yard where it's exposed to, okay. you know, the residents. Is this open to the commission or is this? No, this is please. Yeah. Okay, I, there is something here. I, I think what we ought to look at is what, uh, what meets a standard that we can live with. Now, I understand your, your issues, Mark. I taken the last two weeks to walk my dog past that place every day and I'd have to say the texture of it is not bad. It's it's greener than the surrounding lawns but uh, we have a problem in South Florida with uh, the cultivar of uh, grass that we have. There's a virus that is killing it and uh, University of Florida has yet to develop anything that will resist it. So I think uh, artificial or synthetic grass may have more of a uh, impact on us than we might admit. And if we can't grow any kind of grass in our lawn, uh, bluegrass is, requires way too much water, uh, we, we're going to have to consider what options are available to homeowners to replace this grass. Because once it's in your lawn, your lawn is done. You can't stop it. And with, with all the commercial lawn surfaces, they're cutting lawns out west of us that are infected with this stuff. And then they come into our town and they cut the lawn and it's going to spread. So, I mean, I think we need to consider whether it's, a, it, it's something we can live with. No, I understand. I, and I'm well aware of the fungus and the but a virus. There, or a virus, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, but there are many forms of species of grass that we have here in this growing climate. So, I don't think one situation should tip the boat all the way to let's get into a bulletproof type of um, sod or grass situation. I just think we got to tiptoe through this because it could run out of, get out of control pretty quickly. So how can we tiptoe through it? Is, a, is it a case by case review, Mark, do you think? Well, I think we have to address an ordinance as to where mm -hmm. it's allowed. Nobody's discouraging it totally, but I think we've got to start like, I know four other communities that you know, you're, you're not allowed to use it in the front yard. If you want to use it in the rear yard and you have dogs that are going to tear it up and mess it up, that's fine. That becomes an issue which is not... Well, but it, it matters, the park rights and all that, pervious versus impervious, but why reinvent the wheel? If there are four communities, neighboring communities that have a code, why don't we have those codes presented to us 
and see what, what we can do. That's what I thought we with. requested with some research mm -hmm. done. And, and I know Lisa wasn't here and compared to her. I, you know, I don't think that translation. Right. Well, I, I, I didn't want to go stand up before you and give you some technical guidelines that I created because I didn't create them. <laughs> so that's why his name's up there. Synthetic Turf, there's a Synthetic Turf Institute that has been educating us and the Palm Beach County League of Cities now for the last eight years. So that's why I just cobbled this together. It's a promotional together. thing and I got Well, that, I, it's, it, there's just, it's just, there's technical guidelines in there. We, we don't even have to discuss that. If you would, if, if it is your desire not to go through this quickly, we can, whatever your I desire would, is. And Mr. Chair, I would, sorry, I would like to defer that aspect of the presentation until we have some better guideline on right. an ordinance that's going to tell us where we can and can't use it, right. rather than going in. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, so consensus is let's, I guess, my, so, you know, a staff member will reach out to you, Mr. Marsh, and I guess get names of those four communities, and we'll see what other ones we can come up with that are similar to that. and. Uh, at the next meeting, um, have some examples of ordinances that you all can take a look at and give direction yes, to. Is that kind of the consensus of the board? Yes, yes please. And I okay. Think, you know, and another nuance is, for example, Melnick's house, is that synthetic turf in the front yard or what? Well, if, you, if you'd allow the pi there's a picture in this. Yeah. If you could put that picture up, I'd like you to tell me where, where it is. Because yeah. you can't been, tell where I it is. You can't tell in person. No, you can't tell on it's the, it's the picture. It's in a good spot. Yeah. Have, yeah. You, have you walked by it? Yeah, I have. And I can tell where it's real grass. And oh, you can? Okay. I don't dislike it. Yeah. And I am a proponent of it in a driveway, right. in narrow yeah. slips where it looks far worse. If not, I'm not a proponent of it in full sheets of carpet in the front yard, period. That's, That's just my opinion. And, and if this is your, this is you guys. You, yeah. you need to give us direction. I just so, wanted to educate you. So, um, that picture shows, there's two pictures. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can put the next picture up. Can you tell where the synthetic turf is in that picture? I just, just. Yes. Yeah, again, you're, you're going okay <laughs> above and beyond. Okay, I use it. Okay, I use it too. Yeah. I use my own. Okay, so let's go back to the direction we'd like to direct staff, which is well, you champion this. Take a look at <laughs> ordinances in let's no. say three or four other communities where there are guidelines, and then come back and and show us those various guidelines. Then we can make a decision as to what to recommend to the town committee. That's fine. We can look. We can app, look for yeah. ordinances. I yeah. have to tell you, there's municipalities that are in the process of creating ordinances as we speak. Okay. Uh, the yeah. village of Palm Springs is working on one right now, so we can get their draft. I'm um, interested. Manalapan in and Jupiter Island. I'm not sure if they're ordinances, but we'll find out what they have. Good. I'm, I'm not interested in what's right. being adopted now. I would uh -huh. like to know some track record where communities had lived with this for a number of years well, and to find the challenge and find the challenges that they've come up against and I'm sure time. with anything over time okay. there, there are challenges Good. I mean yes. it's it's an offset there's there's pluses Adequate and minuses okay. direction staff yeah. thank you okay, yes. okay. we've got one other item yes please yeah the, the, the last item oh yeah the last item number seven um, should we discuss that today or? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay. definitely yes. need to discuss it today because the town commission adopted the ordinance and that will go into effect immediately. So at your August meeting, August you will, meeting. yeah. Got so it. we okay. need to talk about the process um, and Good. maybe strengthen some ordinances because there is nothing currently in there that says what will happen if something's denied. That's okay. a big one. Um, and then what will happen if something is approved with conditions. So it right. needs to be discussed. Uh, I, I have a question starting out on the memo because it, it says the ordinance went into effect on June 3, applications received by the town prior to June 3 will be under the old. Correct. But isn't there a difference between a complete application and an incomplete application? Uh, it should be a, a full submittal, not somebody who 
Um, Here's a piece of paper I've got I've got in under the wire. We, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't take it in like that. If, right. it's, if, if, it's a, if it's an application already submitted to be processed, then they're on the old. If it's just an application which is which is it's not put together, then we're not even accepting it in the first place. Then that, they have to come back to submit. So it's a, so that, that if just a sheet of paper, that's not even accepted. Okay. It so will be it will be something that's considered under the current guidelines. Um, that's going to be in for which is what the June and the July meetings are. Do August will be anything that's coming in, and as such, we're looking for guidance as far as a checklist of what you'd like to see. Like I already got an idea of where we're gonna make sure that your 10 packages are only leveled by 17. We're gonna have three available full size set for any questions because the print is kind of small on the level by 17. We're making sure that PowerPoint presentations are in place for everybody. Um, as you can see this morning, all, all applicants had PowerPoint presentations. Um, so that it helps explain exactly what's taking place. Okay, so, so June 3 is passed. Mm -hmm. Are there July? It, it's going to be similar. No, so did, and uh, so, are there any things that weren't <clears throat> proper submittals that are potentially trying to go in we're, we're under the a, old code? No, we're working on a forty-five day submittal process. So it takes us a while before it even gets to you. So this is they have to submit it forty-five days prior to anything. A complete package. A complete package. So. Now sometimes the they cutoff. submit they submit a complete package, but staff reviews Comes. it and notices certain things, and then we have to go back to the applicant and say, "Okay, we need this." Okay. So I think that I, I'm that's just trying to make sure nobody games the state. No. Oh, that's, no, ex no. that's exactly, you know, that that's the direction to staff mm -hmm. that because that, that, uh, it's a big difference. And if I was an applicant, I would sure have tried to figure out how to be in before June three. So I agreed with the comments that Wayne made on, he's been making notes on how we would like to see the package presented. But back to the basics, we don't need to reinvent this wheel. This is, we're the last municipality to have some sort of governing body. Um, what do the other municipalities do and can we just imitate that? We're going to work toward that. However, what we have in place now is a, is a real baby step as far as what other communities do. Yeah, I think, again, not having Marty here, um, most communities actually have a described mm -hmm. criteria mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. for applicants to and boards or commissions to enforce. Right. We're, as the baby steps, we're not trying to tell people colors and, you know, if they clash, mm -hmm. then we may voice our opinion. We're just trying to, the whole of this is to try to get scale, <coughs> some architectural element or design that represents the kind of theme of the town or the, what's appropriate, um, material choices in some cases, and then just land use issues, which are setbacks, landscaping, quality of landscaping, and that and drainage, obviously. Um, my civil engineer <laughs> 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 Um, so I think, yeah, it would be good, and, and the one I keep preaching, similar and dissimilar, that's the fundamental backbone to all of us, right. um, is to look at other communities, and, you know, we may just have to kind of pick and choose what we all agree that's going to be appropriate for our situation. You know, I don't think we want to rubber stamp or take... Uh, because I deal with this monthly. No, okay, so you currently have a code that you you will be going by. So when this starts in August, you have that code that you'll be going by. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to to do today is to figure out what do we do as staff if you deny an application. What happens at that point? Well, I mean, at at that point, if an application is denied, unless it, and I guess the and. I guess most of you know this, if there is, depending on, there's different codes, they say, okay, there has to be substantial change, whatever that means, before an application, say, can be brought back within, you know, a certain period of time. 
I don't know if that's something that you all are looking at because I think what Tracy's really looking at here is it's, it's the process. Yeah. So if you all deny something, now if you Can it come if back? you truly deny it, mm -hmm. then we probably need something in the code that says okay, you know, because I mean we've all seen this happen before. What if there's just you know three members up here or something like that, and the the meeting is held and. Uh, it's it's a two to one uh, denial, which is not really a denial because we kind of got to have three. But the person says, "Look, let's, let, you know, I want the full board now." Uh, and then they could say, "Okay, well, look, I want to come back if if all three of you vote for denial." And they think, "Well, if I come back, my odds will be better." You know, is that allowed? Does there have to be a change in the plans before they can come back? Just kind of some procedural steps like that. I believe that's yes. that's what okay, and and we as staff, it's going to be difficult for us unless we have an ordinance to, you know, kind of make that call. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to encourage, because being a victim of it, as I said, on a regular basis, denial is not a good approach. Okay, deferral is the approach yep. that this mm -hmm. board should take or commission. Yeah, you don't want to deny right off the bat something. You can express your opinion and defer it gives the applicant the ability to come back and respond right. to your comments. Right. So denial should be the last thing on the, the docket. Here. And, and I guess in most cases, if somebody's asking for an up or down vote, they know they just want to appeal that up to the to the town commission right. anyway. Right. So, so um, we, we don't want to burden the commission right. with right. additional. Um, but I guess those are things that we can probably take a look at some surrounding sure. communities that do not have a you know, you don't have an in-house planning and zoning department the way a lot of other communities have. So we can, I, I guess, kind of look at some other smaller communities and maybe see, um, you know, how they kind of address it. Um, I, I agree I with know. Mark. I think um, we should work through with the applicant uh, and, and help, help them help themselves so that we then feel comfortable enough to recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Now, the other thought I had was, uh, this is a baby step, we all agree. It's unusual because there aren't too many, there aren't any other communities that are in this baby step position. Maybe one thing is for us to go through three or four meetings and see how it works and then sit back down and say, you know what? We really need to uh, adjust how we proceed with this and maybe come up with some new ideas that we then present to the commission. Yeah, this is going to take some time to evolve. This is not a right. switch, turn the switch on. And yeah. It's, so it's because it's it, you try to be as objective as you can be. Yeah. Uh, and work in progress, Mark. Yes. Yeah. yeah good. So I think there's a learning curve here for everybody. Yeah, good. But again, I, I just heed to the fact that don't because you don't like a color or don't right. like a window you know you can make comment but deferral is deferral. is the, the best procedure I, I, I try to think back of the ones we've recently had and and um, I, I like would very much like the applicant that we had last month that uh, to um, that we had disagreement over the design just to brought it back to us the next meeting it, see them this time. So I think I think the review will feel like what we've been doing already, yeah. other than if there's something significant, then we give them the opportunity to come well, back. Uh, let's use a, an example this morning. Um, comments that recommendations, some of which I made and some of which you would defer that because yeah. it gives them the opportunity. If they come back and they haven't responded, then that's when you take it up the next right. step. Good. Great. Good. But that's it's 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 a courtesy for the applicant and the commission. Uh, Neil, public comment. Please. I'm going to have to yeah, go ahead. Okay. leave. I'm uh, let the record show. I'm going to go buy some synthetic. <laughs> 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 you won't live that. Uh, uh, Neil Hennigan, 91 Island Drive. Let the resident. record show that Mark is. Uh, I, I would like to see you. Uh, go through a process where you're institutionalizing your your new status and like today and definitely back to mr carey's comment on the house from the last meeting 
I don't think things anymore should be def referred to the building official with comments and saying staff take care of it. I think staff should work it with the applicant, but they should have to come back to you and make a formal proceeding of showing that they have acted on those recommendations. I, I agree, and I think that's exactly what Mark is saying. That's defer mm -hmm. deferring. De deferral. But yes, he, it's what, not, whatever it's called, but yeah, it comes I, back to you as a board. It does, totally not, it does not get settled by staff. Totally agree. I think we all agree. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So, good. Terry? Uh, well, I, thank you. Just wanted to clear up my own mind about the appeal process. If they insist on a vote, it would go to the town commission. That's correct. So if they uphold this decision, do they go to circuit court? I mean, I'm saying it's an extreme example, but the Board of Adjustment, they go directly to circuit court. They don't go back to the commission. They always have that option. So that, okay. Always. Yeah, yeah so that, but that's not written anywhere. Well, no, because they can sue us for a number of different reasons. <laughs> you will know, so, yes, that's right. At any, that, that's right. There you go. So we don't need to put that in the code. Well, you know you're fine with people in Ocean Ridge. Okay. If I, if I could just add to what the discussion was uh, in front of deferral and on what staff is doing, and I'm going to go back to the previous uh, applicant from last month. Uh, what, because of the comments that's being addressed, this is still in the discussion stage with them. They haven't received any permits, so yeah. they've <clears throat> gone ahead to address certain issues, which is lowering the parapet uh, and lowering some of that massing that was discussed. So if you flip through a couple of the slides here, this is kind of like what takes place behind the scenes. And I just wanted to come back and give you an update is what one of the intentions was uh, going forward. Anything that didn't go across uh, clearly enough, I was able to come back and bring it to you saying here, this is where we are with the applicant. Um, and I'm sorry, Mark just left because this is kind of like one of the things that he would have liked to have seen, which is the parapet before and the lower elevation it didn't continue all the way. It was just a half of a parapet. It continues all the way. It finishes off the structure. And at the same token, it still shows the gable, I mean, the hip roof that exists. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's an ongoing process. Right. That's were really were any changes made to the massive uh, front doors? The, 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 the massing on the front doors, unfortunately, he's decided not to... to to uh, make any so change on the door itself. Specific so comment here. That specific yeah. comment was not addressed. Um, he, well, he's not addressing that. He did address the other issues, which was the shade tree uh, in the front. He addressed the parapets. He addressed the the uh, the uh, the elevation as it was shown, uh, wherein you've got the the two styles of roof because of that type of construction. You've got a contemporary on one side, and you flip to the other elevation, you've got a more traditional look. So there was like a conflict that was there, and that was one of the comments was there. But in terms of the front door itself, no, he did not agree to put the transium in there. And that's the difference between the process the difference. we have now and the process we in will August. have yeah. in August. So Mark used the word deferral, and maybe a better way of describing how the process should go forward would be uh, we, we make uh, comments and, and request that the applicant come back, consider the comments, and then come back to us for reconsideration. And the, well, it's not a reconsideration, what it is, and because you put out notice for this, yeah. that we would, un unless we would have to, you know, pay for the notice again and do all of that, we always try to postpone these to a date certain, so that way you don't have to re-notice everyone um, in accordance with their notice procedures now if someone is going to be coming forward. So that way they got their notice. If they came initially for that first hearing, they would understand, okay, it's postponed to a date certain in most cases. Here it would be the very next commission meeting and so that's when they would show up again, and we would not, sure. staff would not have to go through that sure. process again. Important so, I, I absolutely, yeah. 
Okay, so those are just some of the things that we'll be working through to well, try to. to yes, there you go. Okay. Deferral reads to that. Yes, it does. So, and so here's. I think the word deferral is. Uh, Good. Clearly, okay. Mark picked it up. It's good. probably okay, something that's already a, a standard term. Good. Okay, and good. I think it means you're deferred to next meeting. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Come back. Yeah, consider what we said and come back. Okay, good. Any other comments, public or otherwise? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, guys, for that, though. Yes. Where'd you go? I went to Maine. Oh, nice and summery. Yeah. 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 Yeah.